Welcome to the Chain Bites webinar. My name is Mike Salvi. I'm your host. This is Keith Smith. I look over like you're right there, but uh, this is Keith Smith. <laughs> and I, yeah, no, my name's Keith Smith. I'm director of sales here at Chain Bites. And, I'm also, uh, I, I'm also, uh, I, I work for Chain Bites as well too. I'm not just a hired host. All right, so I even wear the shirts and everything. So, um, Keith, I have some questions for you. Uh, some things that we put together for this webinar. Uh, we want to make sure that these are educational. They seem to be everywhere we go. We just came back from another uh, ATM conference, and it's nice to see people like in person that have seen the webinar. So uh, I know they're helpful. Either that or these people are just being really polite when they see me in person. But uh, no, I definitely believe that they're helpful. So um, everybody tuning in, sit back, watch, write your questions down, submit them into the chat, and we'll get into them later. But uh, these are the most common questions that we got here. So Keith, I want to talk to you about uh, some experience that you've had with new operators as the director of sales as uh, and everything else that you are, however else you want to introduce yourself. But um, just to dive right in here, some of the general questions. Uh, the first one is, what are some of the most common questions you receive talking to new Bitcoin ATM operators? Or, uh, or people looking to get into the Bitcoin ATM Correct. business. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Well, there's a there's a lot of questions, and I think that we're going to answer most of them here, if not all of them. Um, where do I start? You know, and first thing you want to do is you know start start by talking to one of us. Uh, you can start by watching one of these webinars, um, but uh, ha have a good business plan. Uh, a lot of people go into this and they they have no clue where to start. I mean, like do you actually want to get into a business. This is a business, so it's not something that you know, some people think it's like a vending machine where. You just uh, fill it up every now and then with some chips and, you know, come collect the change. It's not it's not that type of business. So you, you have to have a business plan. You got to you got to plan out where you're going to um, what state you're going to be operating in. Uh, if you're going to be operating local to you, if it's going to be multiple states, um, you know, if you uh, if you're going to be having any partners, all, a lot of things you got to plan out. But first thing you want to do is kind of get an idea of how these machines work. And we can explain to you the inside out on these machines, uh, explain to you how the entire business works. So that's one yeah. of the first things you want to start with. Sure. Uh, and that's a, it, it's a, it's a fun, it is fun because it's, you know, otherwise I wouldn't keep coming here every day to work, but um, it's a fun process to walk people through, especially when they're brand new and they have no idea. So, you know, expect when you do call in and you talk to one of us, I mean, expect to sit on the phone with us for, you know, at least a good 10 minutes. It could go, you know, half an hour, it could go a little bit longer too, but um, just because we, we're sitting there dedicating the time to answer, there's a lot of detailed questions. People come, well, I, come I, in with I, a lot I, of this. I get, so. asked, uh, I get asked a new question every time. Sure. Uh, it's, it's a new yeah. question every time. And having enough experience in this business, I've actually run into that situation. I can answer that question. So, you know, right. I know people are going to have questions that we're not going to answer today. So, you know, if you got sure. those questions, ask us. You know, right. we have the answers. Uh, so that uh, so you're also in operations, too, for the people that don't know, for people that are just brand new. So um, so you're literally hands on uh, with the with the machines as well, too. So. Yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot of too. aspects to the business. So, you know, like, I mean, like, so we're a manufacturer of Bitcoin ATMs. We build the software for them. Um, but, you know, there's also operations companies and there's compliance that's involved in all this. And knowing how it all kind of fits together with banking, uh, what state you're operating in, you might need to get some legal counsel and uh, get a money transmitter license. A lot of people are like, oh, I just want to avoid the whole MTL altogether. But, you know, I wouldn't recommend that. Why? Because you get the MTL. Now you you're ahead of the you're ahead of the competition. Other, that means right. a lot of people can't compete with you. Right. And also having that MTL that allows you to, uh, you know, get Google marketing and, and pay for ad sets and stuff like that. Whereas if you just have the MSB, you can't do that. You know, so, you know, it, it depends on if you're willing to go through it or not. Uh, some states are really easy. Like you can get them right away. It takes, uh, you know, like two weeks. Other states, like um, I've I've had operators wait a year and a half. <laughs> so it's also good to do your own research. I mean, I have no sure. clue what state's doing what because it changes so frequently. Right. Um, so, so I uh, not, not to interrupt you, uh, but so what I'm hearing is, a, so this is actually one of the questions is just what surprises you when you talk to people looking to start a new business. But it's interesting too, because even when I'm talking to uh, new potential clients and, 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 and current clients too, uh, you know, there are some surprises and surprise can go 
either way, right? We're not talking about good or bad. But uh, so, what are some surprises that uh, you know, that you've seen when talking to new people in the business? Uh, I would say that uh, lo locations that work. <laughs> I mean, yeah. sometimes it, it's just like, wow, I would have never thought that that location would work for you, and it does. Um, I would say uh, just the the business uh, successful Bitcoin ATM operators. Uh, sometimes I look at somebody and I'm like, I don't think they're gonna make it, and then they make it. Uh, and then the person I think is is gonna make it doesn't make it. Sure. So, I mean, what really it, it boils down to the drive of the person. It's a business, and and that person having the drive to make the business happen, uh, they'll succeed. And usually, it, it's directly correlated with whether or not they've been in business before. If you if you had a business before and you made it work, then you can make this business work. It's a cash business, and it takes it takes a little effort to keep it going. Sure. That's like anything, right? So, I mean, uh, and I, I'm bringing this up because uh, while we're talking in the, in the, you know, in the arena of Bitcoin ATMs, you know, you hear make it or don't make it. But I mean, that's, shoot, it's the same thing with karate classes. I mean, you know, I can remember, you know, you judge the short little quiet kid who comes in and then ends up becoming a gold medalist and all those things. And, and the big burly guy that comes in that, you know, everybody ends up beating. So, no, I, I agree with you. Um, so as far as with all these questions, surprises, different things, like as people are coming into this new business, um, how much help do you provide? We as Chain Bytes, how much you know do we provide? But you specifically, well, uh, yeah. So me, well, me specifically, um, sure. oh, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> um, I, I, I like to answer people's questions. I like to see people start businesses. Uh, that's one of the reasons I got into this business, is because one, I like running my own businesses. I like uh, helping the Bitcoin ecosystem and seeing it grow, uh, distributing the availability for people to ha have the ability to buy Bitcoin. Uh, you know, like the, the easier people can on ramp into Bitcoin, better for Bitcoin. And uh, but also you need a, a sound uh, like a business infrastructure to help support the back of Bitcoin. Uh, seeing people start businesses, and having that because I've started a lot of businesses and, you know, before the advent of the Internet and had to do everything the, the rough way, the tough way. And even the Bitcoin ATM business having to learn the hard way. Um, it's tough. It's not easy. And so having somebody that can actually, you know, kind of guide you on the path to get you started, you're going to still have to you're still going to have to do everything yourself. But being able to help people make those steps and go in the right direction rather than veer off into the wrong direction is uh, I, I like doing it. I, I sincerely like seeing people start businesses and especially when they, they succeed at them. Sure. I mean, nobody really knows where to start. And so having an idea where to start, that that's, that's half the battle. Right. Uh, so, all right, so I'm going to wrap these next few questions in together because um, I feel like one answer is in the, one of the questions, but um, so as far as choosing the right location, um, and what errors new operators make and what's kind of the most profitable. Um, I think that I, overall, like what, what are your, uh, what would be your advice in choosing the right location and what makes it profitable? Um, by not just going and getting one location. So the best thing to do is to get a bunch of locations and learn the hard way, which locations work. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's just it, because every location is going to be different. Um, uh, you, you want a population center near, the, near that location. Can't be out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, Bitcoin ATMs are out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. It might be a really busy gas station, but nobody lives near there. People that use Bitcoin ATMs go to Bitcoin ATMs near their homes. So it right. needs to be, there's gotta be residences around the Bitcoin ATM. Um, that's important, but it's also gotta be easy to get in and out of. So you want to have plenty of parking. If you have to street park 10 blocks away and walk, nobody's going to want to do that. So that Bitcoin right. ATM is not going to do too well. Um, and, and it maybe it does. So I could be completely wrong. Maybe that location works. And you wouldn't know unless you actually did it yourself. So this is where it's good to do some experimenting. Uh, you know, you got five locations. Pick those five. See which ones work. If one doesn't work, it, just move it move it right. to a new location. You'll know within six months to a year whether you know, you're know you just losing money at that location. 
and uh, the locations you're making money on pay for the location that you lost money on. So, you know, that's how you learn. Well, I'm glad you said that because um, I feel like the most common, uh, you know, air quotes, common error is uh, other than, you know, just trying to figure this out completely on your own and not listening and, you know, having there's a there's, there's a plan here. It works. Um, but believing in a location so much where some, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, try it. If it works, again, surprises. We'll be blown away that Chuck E. Cheese is like, I'm not picking on Chuck E. Cheese, but I'm just saying like, will you be blown away that like some location just ends up being whatever, but overall where the where the bread and butter is, is kind of where you want to stay, especially, um, and I always like talking about this. I like bringing this up, especially for new people that are watching. Uh, what are some of the locations that uh, you would avoid? Oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, restaurants. Um, I uh, avoid malls. I avoid uh, airports, uh, and, and it really boils down to uh, like when when it comes to like airports. The last place I'm going to go is Philadelphia International. I don't like flying. I'm not going there to use a Bitcoin ATM. Sure, and, you know, like so. Yeah, you might catch some customers like, "Oh, cool! I've never seen a Bitcoin ATM," but by this point, most people have. So they've seen Bitcoin ATMs before. It's it's not a novelty type item. Uh, it's actually a fixture in a lot of stores, especially here in America. So unless they're coming from you know overseas, I mean you're not going to capture much. Plus, airports charge a lot. If you want to get a, a into an airport, you're going to pay premium, and you're never going to see your return. Uh, same thing with malls. Now, another thing with malls is you got to park way out in the parking lot. You got to walk all the way through the mall to get to the kiosk. Well, why don't I just go to the local gas station where I can park, take 10 steps from my car, do business and leave. It just, I, I'd go to the gas station if I wanted a uh, gallon of milk. I wouldn't go to the mall, right? Like if I needed convenience and that's why they call them convenience stores. So any place that is convenient now, the demographic that uses these Bitcoin ATMs, they tend to be older crowds. So they're going to want convenience. They're going to want, you know, definitely you, you need a handicap spot, right? <laughs> like if there's no handicap spots, then you're, you're you know. Um, but th these are things that you want to think about when you're looking at a location. Also, for your own ease, <clears throat> servicing a Bitcoin ATM that you've got to walk a couple blocks to, uh, whether you're pulling cash from it or you're changing printer paper, it gets old. It gets so old. I pull those locations because there's that I get tired. Of, it's not worth me walking. I'm, I, I mean, yeah, you could end up making a lot of money at that location, but uh, if it doesn't have a spot right out front, it's just not worth it. So, yeah, bodegas do great. Uh, convenience stores, uh, gas stations. Not every gas station does great. So. You know, and, and that's the whole matter of it's like uh, there, there was some research done in, in the best locations for Bitcoin ATMs happens to be where where the own where, where the owner is actually like knows the customers. Uh, they're not just, you know, somebody that's there getting money and they're like, hey, Frank, how's it going? You know, it's, uh, it's a beautiful Sunday, you know. And, and, and so the customers that go locally to these general store type places where where they build a clientele, they tend to do way better than the other locations. Plus, if you uh, you get a you get one of your landlords actively on board with your business and you explain to them, hey, look, I'm driving customers to your location when these customers come here and you know how to use it. You show the landlord how to use a Bitcoin wallet, how to use the machine. It's real simple. You help them, they're happy. And then you got, here's here's a number that you can call us directly, you know, if you have any issues. And then that owner is very happy. They're like a salesperson. Sure. They're like, hey, this is how it works. So if somebody if somebody shows up to the Bitcoin ATM and they're just like, I don't know if I'm going to get through this. Just because they're overwhelmed. Because the whole reason they're coming to the Bitcoin ATM is because they don't understand technology to begin with. And just to have that little hump, those are the best locations. Hands down, best locations are where the owners are working with the customers. They're, they're working to get you customers. And you can find ways to make it uh, make it interesting and, and and have fun with them, too, I'm sure, too. Uh, so yeah. when you were talking about convenience, that's a, that's a good segue into the next one. So as far as convenience goes, um, all of Chainbytes machines are two-way machines. So uh, there are some variations in, in the model that we have, but uh, let's talk about the new model that's out. 
Because I yeah. was excited so to see we, it. Uh, we, we, we we've had this model. It. We've had this model out in the field. We've done like two years testing on it. We like the model. Um, it's uh, not it's not as a uh, standout ish as our fleet model that we've been selling. Um, and so it doesn't have a top screen, but it does fit into some locations that are a little cramper, which opens up you know more more areas that you can uh, deploy these to. And uh, that, that the location that we have one deployed right now is in a location where it's a little bit too cramped and there's no way we would have fit the other Bitcoin ATM in there. So it worked out there. Uh, now this, uh, who we originally liked, like our nickname for it was the, the Tesla model because it's really sleek looking. And, uh, uh, but it does the job. That's the key. It does the job. It looks nice. It does the job. Um, it, it does stand out differently than a traditional ATM. So you can tell it's a kiosk and it's different than, you know, a traditional ATM, but it also, you can tell it's an ATM. It holds, it, now it comes in at a different price point, but that's because it's got a, it's got a different recycler in it. So it, uh, uh, how many, I, I think it's, it's 600 notes in the cash box and it's 40 notes in the recycler where the recycler in our other machines are a thousand notes in the cash box and 80 in the recycler. Yeah. So there's a little bit less cash it can hold, but typically you're not going to ever see that get like rarely you'll see that get filled. I mean, like you're talking uh, if somebody put all hundred dollar bills in there, you're talking $60,000 in the cash right. box plus another, you know, what $4,000 in the recycler. So $64,000. That's very rare that you'll get a customer up with that kind of money. So typically at like, you know, 10, once you got over $10,000, you've already got, I, I'm figuring that this, this is going to get, this cash is going to get picked up because you don't want that kind of cash sitting around in a Bitcoin ATM. And when you got a customer comes in and does a larger amount, 15, 20,000, then you've already got that scheduled. Hey, we're going to do collections on this. And so it shouldn't be full. Uh, but this brings it in at a different price point. Uh, substantially less than our other Bitcoin ATM. And so we're selling these for $4,999 per ATM. Now, that's if you buy uh, uh, one, to, what, 1 to 11 machines. Uh, if you get over 12 machines, then that drops down to uh, uh, $4,599. And if you get 30 machines, then it's $4,499 per machine. Now that does not include SNG locks. The SNG locks, and the reason we don't include this is because um, some of our operators either are fully capable of installing their own SNG locks and sourcing their own SNG locks, or they got a locksmith guy that does them. Uh, and you know, that's one thing like I've got a locksmith guy and stuff. Uh, but it, it kind of it's cheaper to get it. It's not kind of, it is cheaper to get it done at the factory. And so, you know, the cost of sourcing the lock and installing it. So we do it for $320 per lock per machine. Um, and if you're just starting up and you, even if you're in full operations, it's probably still going to be worth your time and money to just get us to, to get it done. That way it's done. It comes with the machine. Yeah, and then you uh, and then you have the option at that point, as opposed to uh, trying to put it on later and having your machines down for a little bit. It's uh, you know, it, it is. It's worth it. Well, um, and, yep. And what's important about this machine is, uh, you know, like our, our other machine might be a little bit uh, outside of people's price range, or maybe, uh, may, maybe, hat. Uh, you got an operator that wants to do half and half. I've I've got a couple interesting. You know, I got some customers right now, they're talking about doing half and half. And so if you've got a location that's like, if that if that machine doesn't, if that recycler doesn't work, you can always upgrade your recycler toe. And, and we've okay. got it tested. It works with a bigger recycler. So you can get it another for an extra $600, you can get the upgraded uh, recycler. So if you wanted more cash, that's what you would do. Okay. Can we uh can we talk a little bit about the security of these machines? The sure. Locks? Um, uh, it's because because I mean, the only re I you're smiling a little bit. I I I heard 
And I don't talk about things that I heard just in, and put them out there as to be out there forever. But I heard you did a little security test. Yeah. So we had a uh, we had we had a good bit of cash stuck in this machine for about a year and a half. Okay. And and I tried every little thing in the book to try to pick the lock. And you know, I made little devices, and I'm going in through angles and trying to lift this, try to slip this, wiggle. Maybe if you vibrate it for two hours straight the vibrations will you know vibrate the bolts loose i, I tried everything did it work uh okay. eventually I'm, obviously uh, not go ahead i'm sorry eventually took the safe the shelf which is i gotta warn uh customers it's extremely dangerous okay <laughs> so do not yeah. try this at home right that's the disclaimer. yeah if you've ever watched the show breaking bad where the guy dies um, I was a little worried for my own safety at one point. So I, I was like, man, I'm getting breaking bad vibes here where the ATM falls on the guy's head because the, the safe itself is so heavy and the shelf, that's like the heaviest part of the whole ATM. So getting it out, we got, we got it out. We got it onto the floor and we started slamming that thing with hedge, uh, sludge hammers and hammers and pry bars. And just like, we're going to break into this thing. We're taking the cash out. So it was about two hours later, smashing and prying, gave up. I was like, that's it. I'm done. And, and and I gave myself a black eye while I was at it. So, you know, the ATM gave me a black eye and uh, finally decided, okay, the only way we're getting into this is with a grinder. We got to grind through the metal. And we, we did, and we got into it. But uh, it took a good long while and we destroyed the recycler and we did, it, it, it was it was not worth the time doing that. No, no, it wasn't so, because I can tell you after 15 minutes of smacking the sledgehammer, I would have got the grinder. So I would have saved an hour and 45 minutes. I probably would have saved the black guy. What happened to the sledgehammer? Well, hey, what it hit took you a while to grind through it. So, you know, I mean, like but you would have been all, an hour and 45 minutes ahead of the game. What, ha how did you get the black guy? I need to know. I I've been in another, I've, I've broken into other Bitcoin ATMs and I've done it with a screwdriver. So, you know, having gone through this entire process trying to get into our Bitcoin ATMs, I was very, very impressed. I mean, like I've always sold it as, man, these are secure, cold rolled steel. The yeah. cold rolled steel is on the back, or is, I mean, is the box, but the safe itself, man, it's, they built this thing and they built it so you can't get into it. Right. And Sounds I like locked this, the declined to come break into the, to the safe. Wow. Um, That's why I yeah, broke into it. I had I, to say no. So. <laughs> it sounds like you were impressed. It sounds like the hammer made an impression on your face and uh, and, and left you with a little gift for a few days. No, that, was, right, so the, the, that was the five-foot crowbar because what? <laughs> I mean, I was it was no little crowbar. I was trying to get into it. I'm a big yeah. boy. I'm six foot three. I'm trying to get into this thing and it would not. But not sure. letting me in. And two guys. We had two guys trying to break into it. Body weight, you know, two. Yeah. So I hope that paints a picture. <laughs> so yeah, right. Yeah. So just uh and for any uh for any of you hackers out there watching, just you know, move on to the next thing. Try to grab, I don't know, something else, a pinball machine. Well, and, and so we've had we've had two operators that had their machine stolen. And and through the same processes, these these thieves had to get into the safe and right. Both of them, they had under a thousand dollars in their machines because, like I said, get a large amount, right. you you go right. pick it up, you get it picked up because it's a it's a risk. So you don't want it sitting there with fifty thousand dollars inside the machine because I just, you just <laughs> sorry, I just want to interject because for the people that are brand new to watching too, um, for anybody that's sitting wondering, well, how do you know how much money is in the machine? You'll tell, and we'll walk you through all this too when you call in to talk to us. Um, but you can tell on the dashboard; it shows you in real time what's in there, which bill how many notes and when you're getting up to it. So, uh, so that answers that question. Um, yep. Every, every one of your locations, you, you, it actually breaks it down on the dashboard so you can see how much you can see uh, what customers putting in what order, how many bills. So let's say uh, for instance, um, I got a plan that I, I need uh, if you're doing your own cash collection, say you got little bills going here, you got big bills going there. You can actually say, Hey, let's just go pick this location up and we can pay a bunch of things you know so it, it makes it really easy it breaks it down you can see uh the performance of every single machine 
so you can see how they're performing monthly and yearly. Um, you can see averages, there's charts, there's a, there's a lot of things. So with that, so while that's been around for a while too, we fine tune some things too and turn them up a lot with, uh, with some AI integration. So let's talk about that a little. Sure. Uh, so we, we've got a couple of different AI and I'm always thinking of new things with AI that can benefit our operation. I just thought up an idea the other day that I'm going to be talking about. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that here because first we have to build it. Uh, but, you know, whenever whenever we see something that can make our lives a little easier, then we build it. Uh, one of them is the traveling salesman. I like the traveling salesman a lot because what I'm able to do is I'm able to take, you know, five, 10 hours a week and cut it down to a half hour. Like it, it literally takes no time at all. And I can plan out all my cash collections for my route collector. And what it does is it, it, it finds all the locations that have X amount of dollars. So I give it a threshold. I type in, you know, you know, all locations over uh, $3,000 and it'll plan a route using Google and traffic, knowing what is the uh, actual most efficient way to collect all the cash from all the machines that meet that threshold. It breaks down the gas mileage. It breaks down everything. It makes a real, uh, it saves me a lot of time because I've had to do that before. I'd have to sit there, look at a map, look at, look at the dashboard, try to figure out which one's going to which. And right. so um, that these little, it seems simple, but it, saves me time so what's that what's that value to me that's a huge value for, for right. me because you know we'll say at least five hours i'm saving a week and what's my time worth well my time's precious um <laughs> so i'm not going to tell you what my time's worth but you know every hour is pretty precious to me is you know as precious, precious as bitcoin is so anywhere i can save money we've also got ai with um We've got a AI program, and this is ties into the compliance end, and it helps with compliance. So it's scan, it's scanning for scams to help identify scams, and it successfully stops scams, which is you know really a big deal because human beings have the ability to work really hard. AI has the ability to operate like a thousand really hardworking human beings. And so where your eyes may not see something, AI will. And that can save people money, all right? And you want to be able to identify these things. And you can actually identify criminal behavior, you know? So the, the, this is the way of the future. Uh, we're building AI products and we're integrating them. We're testing them in real life. We, we, we're out in the field. So we're not just uh, building things, not testing them. Everything's getting tested and it's like wow this works this is great and that's why we're rolling it out to you know our uh, customers well this stuff sounds exciting but so um let me just if i'm just some guy with a lot of money that just wants to figure out all right how do i convert this cash that i have into this wonderful bitcoin atm business i don't know anything like i you know i think about my father he's not in the bitcoin atm business but like the guy learned how to uh, start typing at like 49 so for someone like that who you know, how sim how is, is this software and all this other integration complicated to use? Is it easy? Oh, it's it's super easy. Um, I mean, there's some people that are not too bright that do pretty well just using our software. Uh, I mean, so on the on the back end for operators, it's really easy because it's broken down to be as easy as possible. And that's because we're in the business of making money and saving time. Right. So if you want to save time, you don't want to complicate it for yourself. Um, and Eric, you know, began building this software for himself. So anything that makes his, if anyone knows Eric, okay. One thing is Eric doesn't like wasting time. He doesn't have time for things. He doesn't have time for time wasters. And, and wasting time is the last thing he wants to do. So he built the software to save himself time and make it easier for him to operate his own Bitcoin ATM fleet. Uh, but the same thing applies on the front end. So where customers are coming to use our Bitcoin ATMs, uh, the you want it as easy as possible because they're not tech savvy. And if you confuse them, they're not going to get through the process of buying Bitcoin. One thing that I see with quite a few of our uh, competitors is their software is complicated. 
I'm extremely uh, tech savvy. I, you know, I, I know how to search things on the blockchain. I know how to use DeFi. I know Bitcoin this, Bitcoin that. I can explain you Bitcoin up and down. But hey, you know, I'm sitting here at a Bitcoin ATM and I can't figure out how to use their software. Or worse, it doesn't work. I mean, I've tested a bunch of competitors lately and the, the software just doesn't work and can't even scan a wallet. So, you know, wow, that's great. How are you going to... How are you going to uh, actually sell Bitcoin if you can't even uh, scan a Bitcoin wallet at your machine? Like, I don't know how they do this, uh, stay in business, but they do um, for now. But that that's the competition. Um, it takes 16 processes to buy your Bitcoin. And our software takes eight, six to eight, okay, depending on your KYC, how you have it set up. That's twice as likely, at least, that you're going to get a customer. Because customer is not going to have to go through all these extra steps and then say, you know what, I'm done. You know, uh, uh, it's just too many steps for me. Yeah. That's money. That's money being left on the table. And that's p potentially a customer that will never, ever become a Bitcoin ATM customer. For anybody. So uh, another question. So if I already have a fleet of machines, uh, can I switch over to Chainbyte software? That was a submitted question. Absolutely. So if you've got if you've got one machine or you've got one thousand machines, uh, we've got options for you, and we can do it. Um, obviously, it takes it takes a lot of work to convert one machine over, um, and it can take as much work to convert one machine over as you know, literally a hundred machines. If all those machines that are uh, two hundred machines, if they're all in the same location. Um, so it's something that we can, uh, talk on a case by case basis. Uh, this is where you definitely want to talk to one of us. Uh, we've got, we've got some very enticing options for people to come over to our software. We're looking to grow. We're looking to build a relationship with our customers. And so we've got, we've got things that'll, you know, make you, if you've got an existing operation, you want to see it perform better, give us a try. Even if it's just one machine, give our software a try. And uh, we can make things work okay. better. True, <laughs> right? Absolutely. Um, all right. So uh, whether um whether I already have a fleet or whether I'm brand new to this, how do I get started as a Bitcoin ATM operator? Uh, I know you said it before, but some people tune in a little bit later. What's the first step I should take? Yep, talk to one of us. <laughs> um, I, I usually like to like when I when I talk to people, I like to explain to uh, explain them who we are. If you don't know who we are. How the whole process of uh, Bitcoin, uh, how you attain your Bitcoin, how you take the cash, turn it into Bitcoin, uh, marketing, uh, compliance. We'll, we'll walk you through everything. Uh, compliance is pretty. Uh, it's it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty easily explained. Uh, so with compliance, what you have is you've got the issue that, you know, like the federal government wants to make sure there's no money laundering on your machines. So you need a KYC AML policy. Uh, we've got a partnership with a company, btmcompliance.com, and they provide you with a compliance program in accordance with your needs and also in accordance with the Bank Secrecy Act. Uh, it's like, you know, it's about 20, 30 pages long, depending on your policy. And it's like your, uh, it's your owner's manual of how to stay compliant with the federal government. Now, on the state level, they're more worried about what you're doing uh, for consumer protection. So about half the states out there, they go, they fall under what is the Texas guidance that these machines are essentially vending machines. It's, uh, you know, put cash in the machine, get your Bitcoin. Other states, they've got more stringent requirements, uh, and that's where you would need to look into getting an MTL. Some MTLs are really easy to get. Uh, others are not uh, not so easy. <laughs> uh, right now, it's really difficult. Uh, uh, what's going on in uh, California changed some legislation there. We don't really even know what you're what you have to do for California or how to stay compliant. I, I don't think it's possible to stay compliant. Um, so the, these are things that they changed. Now, uh, Florida had something similar and they changed their law. So, you know, this is where if you, let's say you got a, a lot of money, you want to get into the Bitcoin ATMs. Guess what? You've got power to actually, uh, change the way the state legislation works because you can lobby, <laughs> you know, like you go meet these people that make the laws don't understand how these laws work. 
They don't understand how it would impede somebody. So, you know, you go give them a talking to, and then they're like, oh, okay, let's see if we can change this a little bit because they don't want to be pushing sure. business out of their, their states. Some states do. Uh, California and New York, I, I can't explain California and New York. But most of the states out there are pretty friendly to do business in. Right. Um, okay. That covers our, uh, our compliance questions. Um, uh, just last thing about support. So do does Chainbytes offer a live customer support? And can operators reach you via phone? What are the hours? That sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, so we've got uh, 24 hour, We've got 24 hour support. We've got fleet operator support. So for people that's got large fleets, they've got they've got their own direct line. Um, but uh, when it comes to support, you know, obviously, you know, one o'clock in the morning, if you've got an issue with a, a $500 transaction with some junk dude, uh, you should just wait for that guy until the morning until he sobers up, <laughs> you know, like, because he, he's going to be a nightmare to you know, deal with at one o'clock in the morning and we shouldn't be uh, doing anything for that. But typically, mostly, uh, most everything can be done through a simple email. And most most of all support is just the beginning process. And that's what we're really there for you. We're there to help you understand what, what you're doing with the software, with the hardware of the machines, uh, with your customers. And that's what the, I would say 98% or 99% of all support questions that ever were asked through our company is that. So, and, and it, it's really a simple question through an email, get your, uh, get your question answered. There's not too much support to be uh, uh, handled with. Now, when you're uh, uh, getting software uploaded to your machines, you've got someone there that's helping you go through that process. If you've got a, a troubleshooting problem, if you've got any hardware or anything that's acting up or any software issues, we're there for you. And we we like to keep our customers happy. We strive to keep them happy. Um, as for our hardware, it's all got a one year warranty on the hardware, but there's only two moving parts. You've got the uh, ITL recyclers and you've got the K90 custom printers. They're the only two moving parts and there's the two parts that tend to go. I mean, unless your uh, ATM gets shot, right? One of our, one of our operators, their ATM got shot at a robbery and he had to replace the screen where it had a bullet hole and you know we walked him through the process of how to replace the screen so then you know you you obviously don't have to ship the whole atm to us we can then you know walk you through it and it's not that hard to do to repair anything on these atms i've repaired everything on these atms myself and learning uh, just without any help from the support team just because it's all it is is a giant computer but these moving parts, uh, the, uh, the, the, the printer is a thermal printer, so it doesn't require any ink. These things, they've been in the business for 30 plus years. They rarely ever break. Uh, you know, out of a large fleet of machines uh, that were in, and many of these were in operations for over five years, I think two, two of these printers have been replaced so far. So that gives you an idea, and they, they cost like nothing. Um, the, and now, the, 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 the recycler itself, okay, uh, if your recycler reaches the point where it needs to be replaced, it's really actually, it's not that it needs replaced, but it needs to be refurbished. And that's because money is dirty. Uh, gas stations are dirty. You got people who are walking in, they're, they're tracking in soot from the parking lot and stuff. And so being the, uh, the busier the location, the more dust there is in a location, the more dust that goes into the machine and into the recycler with dirty money. Well, after you've recycled over a million dollars through that through that recycler, you've already made your money off this machine. You might need it refurbished. Refurbishing them is actually not hard. So what I do is I go and I got a recycler on hand because once you've become an operator, you tend to get a couple of these recyclers and you have them ready to go. So if you need to swap one out, you can just take it out. You shut down the machine. Right, just like you would a computer, you unplug it, take the recycler out, put the the uh, working recycler in, take that one, then you ship it to ITL and for a couple hundred bucks. I think it's like two, three hundred bucks. They like they refurbish it for you, and, and that's a lot cheaper than getting a brand new recycler. And then they ship it back to you, 
he's got another recycler ready to go. So you probably won't even need to deal with that for the first couple of years. And if you do, then it we we've got you. And the thing that causes a lot of wear and tear on it is uh, bills going through it. So the yeah. more bills that go through it, the more good money you're making. It's a good problem to have, right? Yeah. So you know, without without pulling out the cheesy, well, you just it means you're making more money. It really does. Call it cheese. There's lots of different types of cheese that are out there. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, marketing questions because we got some. So Google, uh, Google change. Uh, let's talk about some of what Google changed here as far as Bitcoin ATMs. Oh, Google. Well, as you may know, Google's very friendly to crypto companies and Bitcoin companies and money service businesses and anything that deals in cash, which is a complete lie. Um, but uh, yeah, so Google's not too friendly. So it's not it's not easy working with Google. Uh, there's different ways to work with Google, though. And like I explained, one of the ways is getting an MTL. So if your if your main operations is in one state, uh, and it's like impossible to you know get an MTL there, or it's cost prohibitive, and it's and it's not cost prohibitive in another state, it might benefit you thinking about maybe I should have two states because this will actually allow me to do advertising, and and it, and it allows you to uh, open up to Google a lot easier. Uh, another thing that like uh. Our operation doesn't have an MTL here. And so what we have to do is we have to do a lot of on the ground work, which involves going to all these different locations, filming the locations, access to the ATM. You got to prove that you own the location and get verification. Think of each individual location as its own business. And this is how you want to run your business to begin with, is think of each individual location as its own store. OK, because that's what it is, is its own location, its own store. And so, like, think of yourself as like, OK, I'm Dunkin Donuts, but I've got all these little different Dunkin Donuts franchises. And I'm getting kickbacks from all these different franchises. Well, this franchise is not working out too well. And this one's doing really well. And then you start looking at it too. That's the, the same thing that you're thinking about. Well, if you're marketing one location, you got to market the other. So this is how Google works. And each individual location requires your attention. If you if you're not if you're not on Google, then people are gonna have a hard time finding you. There's other ways to help them find you, and that's through SEO uh, on your website. You're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna have your locations on your website. Uh, you want people so uh, Google's picking up on the SEO and it's directing people to your locations. So it's gonna have articles, it's gonna have an individual page for your locations, uh, but it's also good to have them on Coin ATM radar. A lot of my operators don't do this or they neglect doing it. There's a lot of machines out there that are not on Coin ATM Radar. Coin ATM Radar does a lot to help promote your machines. And it's so, a free website that most people can go to. And they're, uh, it's an aggregator for Bitcoin ATM. So uh, it's not exactly. just chain bytes machines. It's everything. So a customer is going to look and they're going to go there. And they're going to see yep. what, just like you said, they're going to see what's the closest one. So if you're not listed on there, I mean... Yeah, already, and uh, you're losing a lot. Yeah, I, I, and there's, I forget the name of the other one, but the thing is, you know, you want your name all over the place, mm -hmm. so it's good to be on social media too. Uh, but it's, you know, you uh, when you're marketing, what we've seen the best, the best return in marketing so far, is physical signs at locations. Mm -hmm. And what I mean is not just like uh, uh like we we do a lot of poster boards, uh, bandit signs, yard signs. Uh, there's tube signs, um, but like uh, giant tube man that weighs, we do yep. those, but we've got trailers with four by eight signs. We've got uh, uh, physical signs under the uh, actual prices on the at the gas station, anything that's physical, because you might have your competition across the street and they might have sent a customer to their location via Google. And that customer sees a giant Bitcoin sign. It's like, oh, that must be the place. You just caught their customer. Right. Those locations do. That's the best look. That's the best thing you can do for your locations. So if you if you can afford to buy a giant skyscraper in the shape of uh, uh, the Bitcoin symbol do and it. put a Bitcoin ATM in there, it'll be the best performing Bitcoin ATM in the world. 
I'll make some calls. That's not a bad yep. idea. Okay. Um, so platforms like uh like Instagram, YouTube shorts, TikToks, all those things are important. Facebook ads, what do you think? Uh Absolutely. Uh, I mean, like it, your demographic is going to be using probably mostly Facebook and uh, less so than Twitter and uh, Instagram and whatnot. But uh, you definitely want to. One of the things we do is we we, we film each one of our locations. Uh, Those are great. Uh, I, like, I like to film the outside of the gas station or the convenience store and then walking into the store and then going up and hitting the screen and hitting buy Bitcoin. And then putting in that that's and also having a little explainer at the end on how to use the Bitcoin ATM. That way somebody can look at the location. They can find exactly where the Bitcoin ATM is in the store and how to use the Bitcoin ATM in under a couple of minutes before they even go there. And what's great is the reels that uh, they're they're great, by the way. So, uh, you know, obviously to plug chain bites uh, and uh, Instagram and, and all those other things. Uh, Go and look and see how they look because it really is. And those are videos that are 15 to 30 FBI. seconds long. And you can see and show how easy it is to walk for 15 seconds to go in and, oh, there's the machine, buy Bitcoin, buy whatever. It, so, and so Google Google promotes YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. It's free SEO. So it's a no-brainer. You, you got you to gotta do videos on YouTube. If you're not, you're not paying attention. And you shorts really videos to be uh to be very specific, upload them as shorts. By the way, any video that's under sixty seconds automatically goes up as a short. But if you, uh, you know, if you film it in portrait film, uh, you know, you don't have to make it do, look good. Do it and make both. it look good. Yeah, that's where most of uh I would say about ninety percent of views come from the shorts feeds anymore, and you just yep. dumped into them. So watch them. Uh, what else? Okay, moving on to another question. Um. Oh, this is a neat feature that I always like talking to about uh, some of my customers. Um, vouchers, promo codes, like that's all built into the software. And I know I'm yeah. supposed to be speaking as the question guy, but it is. It's all built in there. So, all right. So what are some of the features that are built into the software as far as customer retention? Well, uh, w w with the vouchers, um, like you can give discounts and you could track your discounts. So you can give out different, promo uh, do different promotions. And with those different promotions, you, you can know what's working and what's not. So, for instance, uh, we had uh, recently done um, a bunch of door hanging, and so we're targeting targeting uh, residential areas, trying to you know get give away free Bitcoin. And uh, believe it or not, uh, it, it didn't work too well. But I think it was because we were only giving away five dollars worth of Bitcoin, and five dollars is the one it was five years ago. Uh, if it was ten or twenty, people would be you know like, okay, yeah, I'll definitely go there and get my free bitcoin uh, but that's how you find out right what we did see though was we got a bunch of scans so people scan the qr code on those to find our uh website which then leads you so uh what we identified was we we actually didn't have a way to track if that turned into a customer or not okay. but it brought people to our website which was worth our time uh, but uh, there's a lot of different ways you can go about it. Uh, and, you know, it, it shows up in the dashboard so you can see when customers are, you know, if you're getting a lot of customers, if this promotion's working, um, if customers are coming in, if you're, let's say you, you know, uh, a first time customer and you want to give them 10% off, whatever you want to do, you can do all these cool things with vouchers. Right. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's, great. it's it's perfect for promo. First X amount of people that buy Bitcoin, you know, it's, it's your business. So you can give away as much as you want or as little as you want. But, you know, find some happy medium where you think it's going to be worth it. Like if you got something in the mail and you saw, oh, I'm getting $3 worth of Bitcoin, you'd probably throw it in the trash. But if you did, if you got something that was 10, 20 bucks worth of, you know, Bitcoin, that's a huge, uh, the, you know, the, that's the an thing investment. Is if, if somebody takes free Bitcoin from you, they've already gotten over the hump. Sure. And once they gotten over that hump, they now know how easy it is to buy Bitcoin from your Bitcoin ATM. Right. So you've got a customer. And so it's it's worth paying it. You know, like it's it's a no-brainer. Yeah, if they're there forever, absolutely. Um, and they keep coming back to you too. Uh, and that was another question. I know we addressed the the two-way thing, but that was another question about the two-way machines. Uh, and it's it's one of these things, I mean, doing your best as a potential operator or even as a seasoned operator, remind yourself of what your clients think about. 
Um, so if they're looking around and they, all they've been using is a one-way ATM machine and then their hot water heater breaks and they need to go pick out, you know, cash out, they're going to look on coin ATM radar or whatever, wherever the closest two-way machine is. And yep. that's where they're going to stay forever. So you better be that two-way machine operator. So Come to a chain by Bitcoin ATM if you need to sell any of your Bitcoin, okay? Our Bitcoin Happy. ATMs, you can sell your Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll even give you, like some operators will give you a discount. We can use your Bitcoin. Sure. Yeah, and, and that's what you'll, so, you'll so find as an normally, operator too. Yeah, we normally see about, it's about 95% people buying and 5% selling. Uh, and that can, that's the average. It can fluctuate, right? Obviously in a bull market, you see it go up and then as and people sell a little bit more when it goes down. Sure. Okay. Um, so that's the, that was all the questions that uh, that we had so far. I'm just double checking to see if there's any last minute ones in there. We're not, which makes me believe that either uh, we are just great at what we do or um, no, we just are. Let's just say that. I feel like we cover most questions, but no, uh, at the very least, I want to leave the door open to any other questions that you have that you may not want to ask here. Contact us directly. Go through the website, chainbytes.com. Um, Keith, any other last minute things? Um, I can't think of anything. Other than buy Bitcoin and hug your mama, uh, you know. <laughs> Us. to the moon sure listen to the moon <clears throat> i'll go to florida okay the moon seems cold there's not much going on up there so you mentioned dunkin donuts i've yet to see one up on the moon i've seen tons on the way to florida so and, and stop uh uh stop stop at our website check out our new model four thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars okay that's if you buy one at 12 and and if you get a, if you get a if you get a fleet up uh 30 machines and you know four uh Forty four ninety nine, can't beat that. You really and can't. The name That's... of the model is, I know what it is, but I'm gonna say it together. Oh, it's a chain bites V. Chain bites v, V. Okay. For very, uh, yeah. Good to you. Right. <laughs> 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 um, for violet, you can do that. So, um, yeah, you can paint Number it violet. Take whatever color. Yeah, great vibe. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well, that's it. Thanks everybody for joining. Make sure you subscribe. Give us a call, contact us, and enjoy the rest of your day. See you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.